Hello everybody, this is Pi. How is it in Vienna on Pi Day? So today is March 14, 2020, the year Corona. And since March 3, you all know this is the first approximation of Pi 3.14 that many of us know. So there were many events planned for today. Many colleagues all over the world were preparing events for the Day of Mathematics. Today is the International Day of Mathematics. And sadly, most of these events, all of these events had to be cancelled because not more than a few people must meet in one room. So we try here in Vienna to do one event locally here in the seminar room of Paul Institute. Our university is not completely locked down. There is no courses like in most universities, but professors can still come to the office. So here we are in the seminar room and we shall at the end of my talk go all around the world and invite colleagues to give a statement on Pi Day in 2020. And as you see, we changed the name from Pi Day to Thumb times Pi Day. There is a German expression, Daumen by P, Thumb times Pi. When you just estimate, or beef, as the French say, you make intuitively some estimate that is sometimes amazingly good, and that's a way of doing, let's say, non rigorous mathematics to get some tools to guess estimates where you cannot prove theories where pure mathematics fail. And that's as important as the theorems, as we shall see. So let's together look at two examples of thumb times pi on pi days. So the first example of this rule of the thumb is use this rule to estimate the value of pi itself. So how can we get an estimate for the number pi? So here you have a circle with the unit circles, the radius is 1, and all of you know from school the area of the circle is the square of the radius that multiplies pi. So if the radius is 1, the area is pi. Now let's estimate pi. So let's draw a square around the circle. So if that is 1, the diameter is 2. So we have a square, 2 times 2 equals 4. So that would be an upper bound for pi. But we can do another square. We can do this square inside the circle that touches here. And we have the right angle here. So all of you learned in school, if this is 1, this is 1. This is square root of 2. The sum of the squares of these two sides at the right angle is equal to the square of the other side. So that's the theory of the diagrams. That all of you know from school, it is formulation for A and B and C are these sides. So what is the area of this inner square? Well, it's square root of pi times square root of pi, and that's of course 2. So what we have is a lower number bound of pi in one minute, and then what would we say? It's in between. There is no reason to assume something strange, so let's just take the middle. So we get an estimate for pi. If you don't know anything how to compute it, you take this and you compare this to the better approximation, you see it's correct up to 3%, which is not bad for an estimate. And if this pi occurs in some modeling of some biology or real world process or economy, uh, well, model error is certainly much larger than 3%, so this estimate might do the job. So that's the first example where we use the rule of the thumb, intuitive methods to get an estimate, but note, we use theorems. So if we do that kind of applied mathematics, of course, 
at the basis we every now and then can use various theorems that you can prove in all sorts of different methods. Let's do a second example. A second example of this thumbs times pi estimate. Well, something that very sadly everybody of us sees in every newspaper every day now, and think politicians start to understand what exponential growth really means. So let's assume that the growth of the number of sick is if they're not confined. So let's try to compute that. So medical doctors, biologists estimate that from one day to the next, there are P percent more sick. Just 20%, 25% from every day to the other, because people are contagious and they spread. So you start with four, the next day you have five, it is 20%, looks innocent. How do we do the math for that? From one day to the other, the number n plus n k plus 1 is the number the day before, that model is 1 plus p, where p is the, is the percentage divided by 100. From that, of course, you immediately get the rule that you have initial value 1 plus p to the power k. Well, the k occurs in the exponent, so we have a exponential function, and what we have is exponential growth.
process in nature or in society. So that's two examples of this fun times pipe. And now let's go around the world. Let's have a short statement of several colleagues that are all around in Europe, in China and other states, what they feel about Thumb Times Pi on Pi Day 2020. Hello everyone, uh, this is Alfio Quartieroni. I'm professor of uh, numerical analysis at Polytechnic di Milano and, uh, and professor emeritus at uh, IPFL in Lausanne. And now I'm locked in my house in Lodi because of this uh, coronavirus contagious. As uh, you probably know, Italy is very severely affected by this uh, disease. So we are forced to stay uh, indoor. Uh, no way to escape from this situation. We just have to be optimistic and uh, uh, have hope that things will uh, improve uh, sooner or later. Um, for the time being, uh, uh, times uh, pi, and I am uh, uh, recording my uh, online uh, lectures uh, as everyone else at Polytechnic di Milano. So this keeps me busy. And uh, in the spare time, I try to uh, do some math. And uh, my uh, favorite problem today is uh, modeling the heart uh, function. It's a very complex problem. Um, no way to prove uh, uh, theoretical results, uh, rigorous theoretical results, but still a lot of hope to uh, say, being able to uh, devise uh, suitable mathematical and numerical models to solve problems that are actually of extreme importance in the clinical practice. So this is my hope. This is the way I uh, live with mathematics in these uh, very uh, dark days. And uh, I wish uh, uh, you all the best uh, for, for the future. Goodbye. Hi. My name is Doran Levy, and I'm a professor of mathematics and the department chair here at the University of Maryland in College Park. The University of Maryland in College Park is very close to the nation's capital. We are about nine miles, making it about 14 and a half kilometers from the very center of Washington, D.C. Um, we are not quarantined yet, uh, but we pretty much stay at home or nearby. Several days ago, we were instructed to move all instruction on campus to online instruction within a couple of weeks. So they give us two weeks to prepare for it. And it's an amazing experience, in particular in the math department, where the culture is still teaching with chalk on a blackboard. Um, pi day. Pi day. Thumbs times pi. Um, I'd like to tell you something that is related to pi. When mathematicians think about pi, we think about circles. So here's the circle story. A colleague of mine several days ago, her husband was supposed to return to the US from Italy. And she wanted to call and get some advice about how to quarantine him, how to quarantine her husband. So she called an office and they gave her a number of a different office, which then gave her a number of yet a third office, moved to a fourth office, fifth office, and the sixth office ended up giving her the phone number that she called to begin with. So the full circle was closed. Yes, this is what we think about when we think about pi. So to our friends and everyone over there, mathematicians or not, be strong, be healthy, think positively, and don't stop laughing. Good luck. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Peter Markovic. Uh, I'm professor of applied mathematics at KAUST, uh, which is King Abdullah University of Science and Technology in Saudi Arabia and at the University of Vienna. Uh, both my universities have closed shop. Uh, due to the coronavirus threat, uh, which is a measure uh, which I fully, fully support. Uh, Saudi Arabia actually as a country has almost closed shop, another measure that I fully support. Uh, in Europe, except in Italy, we are still behind that. Uh, and uh, uh, I realized that uh, the real threat of the coronavirus here in Europe is not taken 
uh, all that uh, seriously, and I believe that uh, further measures will absolutely be necessary. Keep in mind, uh, we mathematicians, we really know about numbers, and numbers don't lie, but populist politicians do lie. I am uh, a globalist by uh, conviction and by heart, uh, but I am absolutely convinced that uh, now is the time where we have to withdraw uh, and localize uh, such that in the near, in the hopefully near future, uh, globalism can rise up again and we will have back our lives uh, that we had before. Uh, how long will it take? Well, Daumen times pi, as Norbert uh, likes to say, I think it will take uh, three to four to five months until the situation uh, has recovered fully. But uh, don't make a mistake. Uh, the situation will recover because of science. Science is what will ultimately defeat the coronavirus. Now, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourself, your friends and your loved ones and isolate. Thank you. Hello, my name is Xi Jin. I'm a professor at China's Shanghai Jiao Tong University. It's great pleasure to be here to celebrate the Pi Day, the International Mathematics Day. Talking about Pi, actually Chinese has been very fascinated about its uh, number. In year 2000, sorry, in year 263 AD, a mathematician named Liu Hui, by dividing a circle into a polygon of 3072 sides, he was able to get approximation of Pi to be 3.41416, which has four accurate digits after decimal. In year 480 AD, another Chinese mathematician named Zhu Chongzhi found the better approximation to be 3.1415927, which has uh, seven accurate digits after decimal. And his approximation has been most accurate for the next 1,000 years until in year 1573. The German mathematician Valentino Otto had a better approximation. So China certainly had a glorious history in evaluating approximate, find good approximation for Pi. So it's a really great pleasure to be here to celebrate this International Pi Day from China. I just came back uh, from Paris uh, about a week ago. So uh, I have to quarantine myself in my apartment in Shanghai for two weeks. I just uh, almost did it for one week, has another week to go. It's a very interesting experience, and uh, I mean, I, it's not most uh, fun time, but I, I did get a lot of work done, and I get a lot of support. My friends have been bringing me food and uh, call me to just comfort me. So, I mean, um, it's okay. I can survive for another week. Well, talking about mathematics, one of my recent research interests has been so-called uncertainty quantification, which could actually be used to model the propagation of uh, ep epidemics. For example, China has been very aggressive in containing this virus. You know, I mean, China locked down the city of Wuhan, uh, with a, which is a city with uh, 11 million people. So very aggressive. Uh, Italy now is also uh, implementing a similar system. But the UK has a completely different system. So it would be very interesting to model how this different system uh, work out in the end. What it takes, how long it takes to get this epidemic completely under control. So that's one of the applications of uncertain quantification. Actually, a lot of mathematicians have been developing different models for uh, this uh, propagation of uh, the very unfortunate uh, coronavirus epidemics. So to end uh, my video, uh, it's, uh, I think mathematics is very useful, it's fun, and uh, I had a, it has been great to be a mathematician for myself. So thank you very much, and happy Pi Day. Hi, 
My name is Zhen Nanzhou. Thanks for having me on this exciting event. Uh, I am an assistant professor from Beijing International Center for Mathematical Research of Peking University, aka Beijing University of China. Uh, I study mathematical models from quantum mechanics and uh, mathematical biology from both numerical and uh, analytical aspects. At this very moment of Pi Day, I'm in Beijing, China, so greetings from Beijing. Uh, one of my past sometimes Pi experience was studying the uh, surface hopping method from quantum chemistry, which is basically a stochastic simulation of the multi-level uh, semi-classical short equations. Uh, at that time, in spite of many existing empirical models in this field, together with my collaborator, uh, Jen Feng Lu from Duke University, we were able to propose a version of it based on rigorous asymptotic analysis. And we were able to prove the absolute convergence of the algorithm. I think that was pretty cool. Okay, so happy International Day of Mathematics to everybody. I hope you do enjoy the rest of the event. Um, please take care and bye bye. Hi, my name is Dristiti, and right now I'm at the University of Cambridge in Cambridge, in the UK. I would like to wish you all a happy Pi Day, Thomas Pi. As you can see, we're not current time. Right moment, I'm in a coffee shop, working the year, doing some mathematics. Mathematical research is in nonlinear mathematical sciences, specifically in nonlinear partial differential equations, Navier-Stokes other equations that govern the motion of fluids. By fluids, I mean liquid and gases. In the last 15 years, I've been working more on uh, Oceanic and atmospheric dynamics, and recently I've been working on data assimilations and on coupling the equations of motion of the atmosphere with the moisture and cloud formation. I would like to wish you all a happy by day, and I hope soon we'll be out of this crisis. Thanks, bye. Okay, on this P day, Claude Bardos is calling you from Paris. Just to say that everything is more or less okay and as an emeritus professor, old, member, old fellow member of the Wolfgang Pauli Institute, I enjoy, as all the administration says, staying to work at home. And it's not a problem for, for me because I had the feeling to be always, all my life in a kind of laboratory with no wall, which extends in many countries with many good friends, with several good organizations like ALC and Kinet, which give me the opportunity to meet friendship and science, and in the meantime, then I shall uh, uh, appreciate good life. And so I will wish to all my friends best wishes for the coming time. Oh, stop. So that's Pi Day 2020 at Pauli Institute in the seminar room. And we say thank you to our assistant, Inva who helped me in producing that video. That's our seminar room. And we are here, empty floors. We are the only one in the whole building. With some dear friends always being present and some of them now watch all over the world. Thank you. Have a nice evening of Pauli of Pi Day from the Pauli Institute. Goodbye. Hello, my name is Birgit Mauser. I also have a contribution for Pi Day. My thumbs times Pi estimate is that this is going to be delicious.